Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege <laughs> with another day in our life <laughs> and the crazy freaking life and the crazy life because it's a digital asset space. Holy moly, what is going on? <laughs> the, what's going on? Judge Netburn did what? Wow, yes, she did. She called a conference. She called for a conference. We'll get into that. It's 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 got a uh, it's about the SEC's reassertion of the attorney-client privilege. Yeah, she has freaking called a conference. She's calling people to the carpet, if you will, if you will. Very very interesting to see that. Listen, the market is doing what the market does. Interesting stuff coming from my guy Alessio Rastani. I watched this stuff earlier this morning when he put this thing out about a metric tool that he's using from one of his TA guys. It was interesting. And actually, Blockchain Backer covered that video um, as well on, you know, the Bitcoin thing, the price of Bitcoin and what it's looking like six months from now and a year from now. And interesting stuff from my guy, Alessio. Uh, but for sure, I'm excited about that as well because it's just really preparation for what is going on in this market right now. I mean, Stefan Huber is on it. He, he is not letting go. And that's we need that, right? We need people to not let go. What's going on with the SEC? Terra Luna, Luna 2.0, I don't even know. What is it? What's going on there? Fidelity, of course, is getting into the picture of digital asset space. We all knew that. I think Fidelity is one is probably one of the better, I think, one of the better guys in digital asset when it comes to these big firms. I think so. I really, really do think so. What's going on, Dano? It is good to see you, bro. I know it's late night, late night on the East Coast, uh, but I wanted to bring this to you guys because this, I think, is very, very important. I think it is breaking news that the Honorable Judge Netburn has called for this conference. <laughs> Paul Bogle's in the building. How are you, buddy? Songberg, I know, my friend. I have been getting Songberg. And boy, oh boy, that chart is looking fantastic. It is looking fantastic. It really, really is. Looking really, really nice, to say the freaking least. It is looking fantastic right now. The market is doing this thing. We'll go over that as well. For sure. My internet is not, not the best at this time of night, but I did want to bring this to you guys. Hopefully, it will play nice. Hopefully, it will play nice. For sure. This market is crazy. Uh, fidelity in the news, I think, is a good thing. For sure. What's going on with Coinbase? Is Coinbase being sued? Look like there's a class action lawsuit against freaking Coinbase. What the world? Can you believe it? What's going on, XRP Rocket Man? Good to see you. Appreciate you checking in. Guys, thank you so much for hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. We're going to break this freaking YouTube hex with this channel and subscribers. Right? We know that we, we should definitely have more subscribers than we have, but we know it was some kind of issue that took place when, when YouTube switched over to the new way that they were going to do the sub counts. And for some reason, we get to 7,600, 7,700, and it goes back down very, very quickly. So we're going to break it. So do me a favor, share this out with people that you know. Hanging out on Twitter, let them know that the Crypto Seed just live. I would definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate that. Yeah, Paul Bogle, yeah, Altitude Investing. That's my guy. He is, for sure, still bullish. TJ Jackson is in the building. How are you, bro? Have you Has any, anybody checked out? Bent Finance or Integral? Anybody looked into those? I'm kind of excited about it. I'm kind of excited about those. But we have been a risk. We've been in a risk off situation for about the last two weeks, uh, about two weeks. And uh, you know, we got we we uh, decided we're going to do dollar cost average, and we're just going to risk off. 
Um, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna. It's funny that we're gonna dollar cost average for Bitcoin when we were buying Bitcoin way back yonder. It's pretty crazy, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Yep, it's gonna be Bitcoin, gold, and um, uh, dirty nasty fiat. Dirty nasty fiat. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put the dirty nasty fiat into a dividend paying cash value uh, for sure. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna buy Bitcoin. In gold twice a week, twice a week, twice a month, and dirty nasty fiat will put the work once a month. That is the plan. Oh, Paul Bogle, you're on that expector. I hear you, bro. I, I hear you. I believe we have some of those. Not a ton, but I think we have them on the Zum Wild for sure. Shout out to XRP Labs. We say when and what they're doing over there. Really, really cool. Really, really cool. And you guys heard about uh Land Network is in there, that final audit, right? So they're in the final audit, but they're in the first phase of that final audit, if you will, before their live date, before their hope to go live date. Paul Bogo, would you rather own Ethereum Classic or Songbird? <laughs> Ethereum Classic is a Songbird. You know, it, does anybody know what the use case for Ethereum Classic is? Does anybody know, like, what's the use case? Let me pull up Ethereum Classic here, and I'm going to share that with you guys as soon as I got it pull up, pulled up. Look at that. I put Ethereum Classic in, and freaking Terra Luna Classic comes up. What's going on? What's going on, Coin Gecko? Let me pull this up for you. I mean, like, what is it? Why is Ethereum? Why is there Ethereum Classic? <laughs> like, like, why? Like, what's going on? Why is there an Ethereum Classic? What's like? Who's building on it? Is it decentralized? <laughs> is it decentralized finance? Like, what is it? The decentralized Ethereum, okay. Building unstoppable apps, right? But what is actually on Ethereum Classic? Let me share this with you guys. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, what is it? You ever think about that? Unstop the, the unstoppable Ethereum, the permissionless, decentralized, uncaptured, immutable sound money. Okay, but what, who's using it? Like what, 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 how is it being used? Wireless and exchanges that integrate 100% unaudited. So, like, I'm, I'm just trying to think, like, what's what are they doing? Like, what's going on? They're, okay, ETC Cooperative announced four more years of runway. Bob Summerall, director has recently provided the community with an update regarding the co-ops, okay. Total spend, okay. But like, what is on Ethereum Classic? Like, what do you do with Ethereum Classic? Like, I'm just trying to figure it out. They have a wallet, apps and protocols. Here it is, apps and protocols. Ecosystem of applications that leverage Ethereum Classic. Coin Rabbit, Token Factory, 
ETC BAY Celsius Network. And like, are they trying to do anything? Like, what is going to so I see apps, NFTs, games, interoperability. So, games. The man who sold the world universe, Commonwealth tribes, and Aquabank. Finance. H E B E swap. Like, it's just like, how is this thing around and what is it doing? Interoperable identity will play a role in creation of the cyber resistant decentralized systems. You ever think about that? It's like, I don't, I'm trying to figure it out. It's a kind of a mystery. <laughs> like, it's, I don't get it. You know, I, I bought this, uh, you know, kind of following blockchain backers lead and you know, kind of looking someone from a charts perspective that might do some things, but it doesn't, I, I began to wonder if it was ever going to come about in terms from a chart perspective, but it hasn't. You know, so like, there's never any talk about Ethereum Classic and um, who's building on it, why, like there's never anything. Andy Tuesday's in the building. Swift is disappearing. Yeah, it was just all from a charge perspective, TJ Jackson. He said, uh, TJ Jackson said, blockchain backers big on ETH Classic. Not sure why, but it's just from a charge perspective. Um, uh, you know, at, at first I thought, well, you know, new people coming into the space, they're going to see Ethereum, they'll see a fine Ethereum Classic. And uh, they'll look at the prices and decide to kind of go that route with the Ethereum Classic in hopes that Ethereum Classic could one day, you know, maybe one day hope be. But it is really looking like more and more you're going to have to, you know, we in the Crypto Seizures Home are going to have to think about the real world use case, utility, or at least in crypto. Tell me about your use case in crypto, right? What's really going, like, what's going on? Who's building on it? You know, those type of deals. So what's going on, Dano? Don Corbin is in the building. How are you, bro? Checking in from Colorado. I appreciate you checking in. So look, this is the big deal on the street right now. I just, this is fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Jinx, thanks to Jimmy James Filing for sharing us. We appreciate you, brother. And the SEC versus Ripple breaking conference schedule for Tuesday, June 7th at 3 p.m. to discuss the SEC's renewed assertion of the attorney-client privilege as to internal documents related to Hemant's June 14, 2018 speech. Interesting. It says this conference shall take place in courtroom 23B. So it's okay. The parties are required to comply with the court's most recent COVID safety guidance, including courtroom, okay, information, okay. The conference is scheduled, da, 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 renewed assertion of attorney client purpose, that's for Drew Zockman. Interesting, interesting stuff, man. Very, very interesting stuff. So that's the big deal on the street. And what is going to happen there? I know I saw Coining 203. He said he's going to New York. <laughs> he's going into New York. He's going to go. He is going to go. Now, um, I believe that uh, I can find it, but I believe, uh, what's his name?
Jeremy Hogan kind of chimed in on this and with his thoughts, if I can find it. Jeremy Hogan, uh, so uh, Wealth Mentor said, let me ask Jeremy Hogan what, about what he thinks. I think the judge read, uh, he, <laughs> Jeremy, you know, Jeremy's doing something with a uh, uh, bit of humor. I think the judge read the SEC's final brief and found it so incredible, <laughs> shall we say in parentheses, that she decided to bring them in, in person to explain the argument and create a clear record since she knows she's being appealed on her decision. And I know attorney Bill had something to say about it as well. Which in, in uh, what's his name? Fred Dis uh, Rispoli has something to say also, but to me, this is, is, is absolutely uh, amazing that this is going on here. Let me see if I have it here. Attorney Bill and Fred Rispoli actually both had something to say about it. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's interesting to say the least. Was it in here? Hmm. And uh, of course, Bill was saying, uh, Jeremy is being really, really kind. <laughs> uh, but in any case, yeah, that is the deal there. I can't find it. What do you guys think about that? Like, what do you think is going to go on there? Justin says Bitcoin Magazine, $4.5 trillion fidelity to double the headcount for Bitcoin and digital assets division. And again, I do think fidelity is, is a little more friendlier, if you will, than uh, JP Morgan or Goldman's when it comes to crypto and digital assets. Um, I really do think Fidel is a little bit more crypto friendly. So my Luna that I was airdropped on Binance, nice, no. So I do that. I do think that Fidelity and what they're doing is very, very interesting. Now look, Ron, guys, Ron Hammond is giving us the latest uh, and what's going on in DC. We all heard from Charles Hoskins. <laughs> we all heard from Charles Hoskins there with uh, apparently a few people in the Bitcoin community. Trying to get Congress to say only Bitcoin and everything else, all these proof of stake consensus and everything else done. We don't need them. You only need Bitcoin or something along the line that you only need proof of works and you don't need any proof of stakes. That's just, not, that's just not great. So in any case, Ron Hammond is kind of giving us an update of what's going on in DC. He says, this week in Congress and crypto, slow week in DC as the tragic event in Texas dominates the attention of policymakers. Major incidences such as last week and the evasion of Ukraine can easily derail the policy calendar, but there are still several things to watch for in June. The largest thing is the June 7th reveal. Hmm, so we got a couple of things going on June 7th. The largest thing is the June 7th reveal of Senator, of Senator Loomis and the Senator Gilbrand crypto bill. This encompassing piece of legislation will be one of the first bipartisan crypto efforts in the Senate outside of the infrastructure bill fight. 
will let me say while this will be an important piece of legislation, it is unlikely at this time that the bill will move in its large form this year. As Congress becomes hyper focused on gun control, abortion, and economic legislation and messaging, time to move crypto bills will be minimal. However, this doesn't mean it can't have elements incorporated in other bills that are moving. Big bills get broken up all the time and Congress tends to move in small bites rather than large chunks, unless it is a major policy priority like gun control, taxes, healthcare, et cetera. There will be hearings in June on crypto, but most haven't been announced. One hearing that will likely include crypto is Secretary Yellen testifying to the Howe Financial Services Committee on June 23rd. Again, Yellen recently testified on FSOC and stablecoins dominated the conversation. Stablecoins continue to be the focus for policymakers, but expect a pivot to Bitcoin spot ETFs late in the month as Bitwise and Grayscale are slated to hear back from the SEC on the applications. You mean they're going to hear back from Goldman and JP, and JP Morgan and Goldman. SEC hasn't approved one yet, and the recent crash likely won't help. Mm. I expect to see additional bills around stable coins to be released over the summer. Many members of Congress have been engaged on the issue, and after months of listening to stakeholders, are close to finalizing what they see as a proper regulatory framework. You know, you guys know I did a video earlier with Senator Loomis being interviewed, I believe, at that particular uh, event. And she was talking about her bill and, uh, you know, very excited to have it be brought forth. So time is to, it's good. and I guess they will reveal what exactly what they see as a security because they're going to they're going to lay out guidelines for what they see as security in this bill, what they see as a commodity, not the asset, but their definition, their definition of a commodity, their definition of security. And she said other definition for other things that might not be a security or a commodity. So it will be interesting. I'd be very, very curious to see how that's going to go. Time is, uh, is the most precious resource, though, for Congress, and a lot needs to be done. There is an outcry from the public to work on pressing issues like guns and inflation. Many members are in the middle of intense campaigns and need to be back in their districts to reach voters. One thing, though, as it relates to crypto during this period is the importance of quality and bipartisan efforts. Even if these bills aren't getting as much attention as other pressing matters, it is key to support good policy as the time will come when crypto will get its turn. Legislating during a crisis can turn things partisan fast and result in a bad product. However, building a solid foundation of bipartisan support behind good policy can avoid these situations. Crypto's time will come for a vote, but for now, other things will, of course, take precedent. So that's the word from DC, guys. and. Uh, of course, you would imagine that that's going to be the case. What's going on, Legendary? Good to see you. Appreciate you being here. Morris Prince is in the building. How are you, bro? It's good to see you. Spanish Cobra, what's good? Spanish Cobra, Siege, what did you mean by putting fiat in the dividend paying cash value policies? Yes, dividend, dividend paying cash value policies. My go my favorite place for the dirty nasty fiat. Pay me an XRP. What's going on, bro? I can't wait for the XLO20 to go live. I hear you, my friend. Appreciate you checking in, guys. Do me a favor, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't had a chance to do so. Legendary says politicians make me very nervous. They're always doing what benefits themselves. Yeah under the guise of looking out for you and I. That is 100%, 100 legendary. 
So did you guys see this Alessio Rastani video? Very, very interesting stuff. He used a tool and or software from his bud. I believe his name is Jason something or another, another big time TA guy. And uh, I would play the video, but it is not going to, I know it's not going to play. But he used this tool and you, you can filter using this tool what to look for. And he used a couple of very, very good things. And uh, we had this particular event happen May 11th. And so he kind of he put some he put some entries in based on what happened lay 11th and the 200 moving averages moving downward blah 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 and looked at the numbers uh what happens when something like that what historically happens when this may 11th thing happened and uh short term not so great not negative but not so great six months to one year significantly better but this was in terms of btc pricing and this particular thing came up with bitcoin when you put the numbers in you do your, do your math at uh, for fifty five thousand bitcoin roughly a year from now so anybody see that video let me know in the comments if you guys saw that video man appreciate that it was really really good stuff let me know if you guys saw that video in the comments Kyle, Kyle T. Moore is in the building. What's up, bro? So that's a, when I say cash value policies, I mean life insurance policy, Spanish Cobra. But we use it to invest our capital. Anybody see that? Anybody see that video? Anybody see the video? I know this thing is lagging a little bit, but anybody see that video? Let's check out the market real quick. Ethereum's at $23.78. Ethereum Classic, rather. <laughs> What's going on with the market? I saw XRP at 42 cents at one time. That was interesting to see. But as I'd like to say, XRP is at 42 cents again. <laughs> the Bitcoin dominance, guys, is 44.3%. Uh, Bitcoin is at $31,810. The total cryptocurrency market cap is only $1 trillion, three, $1.37 trillion. So we're not back to $3 trillion. We're not there. That's the goal to at least get back to that. And the challenge is not that we're going to get back, but how long it will take to get back. Now, rumor on the street is, it ain't rumor on the street, it's factual. Raul Paul says he thinks that, you know, this big time, this little recession thing that we're going to hit, we're going to get, is going to hit hard real quick. And we'll be done by July. Well, we're already in June, so it's, it's going to hit, hit real quick. It's going to be like a month and that's it. So we'll see. Bitcoin Cash and Stellar, again. Who's doing, who, how is Bitcoin Cash going up? How is, well, I know Stellar, right? But what, what's up with Bitcoin Cash? Anybody heard anything about whether or not they got that country, the smaller country to use Bitcoin Cash as their legal tender? Anybody hear about that? I mean, so yeah, I mean, are some things green? Absolutely. But is the market green? Nah. Threadwork Derek is in the building. What's good? Yeah, Legendary. It's a good one. It's this latest one. I think he said Bitcoin signaled this thing. Haven't seen the signal in Bitcoin in forever. I think that was the title of it. Threadwork Derek is here. Good to see you, bro. Life is good, right? So that's the market. It's doing what it does, guys, right? It's just kind of doing what it does. Any thoughts on this freaking hearing? On June 7th, I didn't think about it. I'm sure Judge Nurburn didn't think about it, but it is going to 
it is going to correlate with Senator Loomis and Mr. Gilbrands. I think it's Gilbrands. Um, the you know the 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 revealing of what is that um, particular bill and what it says in it. So it'll be interesting to see. Stock Archer says Bitcoin Cash is really good tender in the Caribbean, where the elites go on vacation. Gotcha. It's fast. I do know that. It ain't Bitcoin. It's fast and it's cheap, but it ain't Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash is definitely easier to operate in terms for payments than Bitcoin. Checking in, OG. What's good, Kev? How are you, bro? Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. So, yeah, Stark Origin. There was a particular nation that um, the Bitcoin Cash guy, and I can't remember his name now, but he was said he was in talks and discussions with a particular country. And I think it might be one of the countries that he is a, uh, a citizen of. I think he has renounced his U.S. citizenship, pretty sure. So I don't know. I don't think it was St. Kitts and Nevis, but it was another one, I believe, that um, he were in discussions with. With Yeah, making Bitcoin cash as a legal tender. That's pretty crazy, right? What's the what's the guy's Bitcoin Cash guy's name? Hmm. Right on the tip of my tongue. One of the OGs in Bitcoin and an early investor in uh, both XRP and Ripple. Forget his name. I forget his freaking name. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, so the la the last thing on not not the last thing, but this whole thing with uh, Gary Gensler and uh, you know what's his name, Charles Gasparino, actually reporting about <laughs> this apparently a mutiny going on with the SEC in house. I know I'm going to try to play this video. I know we're going to have some issues, but this is a really big deal. Well-deserved mutiny. You can say you're here to protect the vessels all you want, but people aren't stupid. And apparently the good people, like you should put quotations on there, DAI. The good people at the SEC aren't buying the BS any longer or highlighted or something. Yeah, did you guys know about that? I know a few months ago, there was some report about hashtag Gary Gensler is not your friend being really, really hard on his employees. So I don't know if this is a recent video. It kind of feels like it is a recent video because I don't remember hearing anything about the SEC's union really, really not being happy with Cherry Gensler. And I'm just very shocked that the SEC actually has a union. <laughs> Take, I'll hopefully this will play. Well, departures at the Securities and Exchange Commission have some on Wall Street saying that shines an unflattering spotlight on top cop Gary Gensler's leadership. To Charlie Gasparino. Um, this is about that under Gensler, and we're getting this from multiple sources inside the SEC. These are people that are staff attorneys, uh, work in the enforcement division and elsewhere. And it's not just so it's not just the union that's chafing under him. It's the it's the the, the attorneys, the, the 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 people that run the place are chafing. They're saying that his management style, brusque, you know, demanding, um, unflinching, his workload. I mean, he's doing everything from cracking down on crypto to ESG to you name it. This is has a very expansive um, uh, regulatory agenda that this is leading to um, massive amounts of departures, even more so than in the past. Uh, um, we understand that three left today. Um, we should point out that. So these are three pretty uh, senior people. Christina Littman, head of the cyber unit. That's pretty big within the enforcement division. Jennifer Lite, Associate Director of Enforcement, and Adam Adderton, Co-Chief of Asset Management Enforcement. Again, for we understand more than a dozen have departed since Gensler's appointment. And I'll tell you, I've covered SEC chiefs for years. I've seen really demanding ones. I've covered Arthur Levitt. I covered even Richard Breeden. That shows you how old I am. Harvey Pitt. Pat Harvey Pitt. Chris Cox. Chris Cox. You just did not see this level of turnover this level of, I don't want to work for this guy. And it's not just the top, 
it's pervasive again he's got massive problems with the sec union you know they're they're rebelling over all sorts of stuff involving their workload now he's got he's got issues with people that are you know the core people at the sec those, these staff attorneys who are leaving left and right the latest three uh we just pointed out and um again you got to ask yourself uh why under him and not under jay clayton why under him and not um, Mary Jo White was no no wimp. <laughs> Remember, she was the SEC chief under Obama. She was no one to mess with. But they weren't. People weren't looking for the door. Wait, is unflinching bad, Charlie? Don't you need a tough? It's a person. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, when does tough demanding become um, abusive? And we just don't like working for you. And um, you know, it's pretty clear that we're crossing the line now. It's also pretty clear that Gary Gensler probably doesn't want this to be his final job, so he's pushing a lot. He's pushing a very expansive and politicized agenda. Uh, he wants to be Treasury Secretary, and he's he's actually said that to people. So, you know, we put all that together. These people feel like they are being whipped to uh, get his resume in shape to take over for Janet Yellen, you know, if and when that day comes. And um, because the SEC is... I mean, there's no doubt that its agenda is well beyond what its usual mandate. I mean, this is this is an agency that generally was about you know catching Wall Street crooks and protecting small investors. Now we're talking about mandating ESG requirements for companies and, and a lot more. So I mean, this is pretty this is pretty interesting stuff. If Republicans get Congress, particularly the Senate, because the Senate Banking Committee is I think the de facto regulator of the SEC. Mm -hmm. This whole staff turnover and, and some and his management style is going to come up. I, I guarantee it. They they will do hearings. Charlie, thank you. Interesting stuff. His managing style and other stuff will come up. Well, good. Good. I say good, 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 good. Hopefully it'll happen sooner rather than freaking later. Roger Veer. That's what it is. Thank you, Stark Arjun. Roger Vera lives in St. Kitts and Nevis. Yep, so it's probably St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you, Star Roger. I know he had the um, citizenship there for sure. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. I think it, uh, so, yeah, I think it maybe it was Bitcoin Cash with Wright and Veer, and then I think Wright and Veer had some disagreements and uh, that's when Craig Wright went and did the big Bitcoin Satoshi vision thing. I think is how that looked. But yeah, that's the word on the street guys with Gary Gensler. SEC is not happy. He's got, he's got staff, the attorneys, they're not happy. And, and it's becoming more and more clear what he is trying to get done and get accomplished and he certainly if you happen to work for him it's going to be very very tough sledding for sure so that's the word on the street guys june 7th a couple of big things are happening there and i think that's really really important uh the senator loomis and gilbrand um crypto bill will will be revealed i can't wait to see what they're going to say in terms of what they want for um, classification, what they, what they, what are the criteria for what they're going to deem a commodity and security and or a currency or virtual currency? It's going to be very, very interesting to see what that's going to look like. Loomis has, has, has kind of turned uh, definitely more Bitcoin only uh, for sure. So it's going to be interesting to see what this bill will look like. Um, and then, of course, the hearing on June 7th as well. I'm sure. Everyone will be at the front of their computer or on the phone or something to figure that out. And I know Coining 203 is trying to get some people to actually meet in the courthouse in New York to see what's up. So, all right, guys, look, thank you so much for hanging out. And thank you so much for taking the time to hit the, the like button. I definitely appreciate that. What's going on, Elizabeth Johnson? Appreciate you being here, Miss. B. Simpson, how are you, bro? Yeah, ready for this market to turn around. I hear you, my guy. I hear you. It is time. Guys, check out that Alessio. Well, hmm, hmm. Let me see some here. Now that video played pretty good, didn't it? Let's see if this will play. And as I'm sure you also know, Bitcoin is facing a lot of.
<laughs> nope. But it's titled, let me get it. Let me get it for you guys so you can watch this. Roger Veer. There it is, guys. I put it in the description for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you all guys being here. It's been a little bit since I've done a live stream, so it's always cool to hang out with the family for sure. Continue to hodl strong. And I am going to end this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this, that old money doesn't want you to win. But that's okay, though, because you and I are already winning. Have a great rest of the day, guys. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.